The Hydrosynth is truly a workstation in a box. With five loopable and tempo segmented envelopes, five complex LFOs, three oscillators per voice with two of them having wave scanning abilities, four mutators for sound sculpting and waveform manipulation, two gorgeous and distinct filters, a large handful of high quality onboard effects, 32 slot modulation matrix for deep routing and mod assignment, and four or eight macro capabilities depending on the model, CV and gate ins and outs, and a whole bunch of other features that truly make this synth an absolute workhorse, the Hydrosynth is far and away already a modern classic. Maybe you've got your eye on a Hydrosynth and you're wondering, what would this kind of synth do for your sound? Do you need a Hydrosynth? Or do you just want one because the hype is real? Maybe you've already taken the plunge and you want to learn how to go deep beneath the surface and learn the secrets of the Hydrosynth at a core sound design based level. Or maybe you're just curious about ambient sound design and want to know more on how to take your synth programming knowledge to the next level. I don't blame you. When I first bought my Hydrosynth, I was obsessed with learning how to program it better and search for every bit of information I could so I could begin to understand how to take what I knew was an already powerful synthesizer to an essential part of my sound palette. In this deep dive sound design video, I show you three separate examples of why the Hydrosynth is so powerful and so amazing so you can hopefully learn how to use it better and become faster and more intuitive on an already extremely useful and logical instrument. This video would not be possible without the generous support of the subscribers on my Patreon where this video was originally found. If you like this kind of video and want to support this channel, I highly encourage you to check out my Patreon. There, you can find tons of extra tutorials just like this one, tons of extra presets for all your favorite synths, one-on-one -on -one ambient coaching, and so much more. The link is down below. And finally, if you want to purchase a Hydrosynth, you can use the links down below to pick up a Hydrosynth of your own at Perfect Circuit. Not only are you getting a great deal and are most products in stock and ready to ship, but by using these affiliate links, you're helping to support this channel and the great folks at Perfect Circuit as well. That being said, sit back and enjoy as we take a deep sea dive into the sonic underworld of the Hydrosynth. Welcome back and welcome to the first ever deep dive uh, sound design video freeform style here on the Hydrosynth. Uh, I have some work to do on the Hydra and I figured why not? The beauty of this platform for me at least is just being able to hit record whenever I feel like it. And you know, we can design some stuff together um, and you guys as a benefit just get to ride along with me. So even if you don't own Hydrosynth, I want this video to be informative, maybe a, a good uh, informative video about sound design in general. Uh, so you guys can see uh, some of the ways that I work and hopefully add some of these techniques to your own sound design. Now, a lot of the techniques that we're gonna to discuss today come from conversations that I had with my partner, Don, about six months ago. Um, he is a very talented sound designer. He's also very knowledgeable, and he shares his knowledge with me, and I'm very grateful for that. So um, a lot of things that I know about Hydra, I've learned from him, and we're just gonna go over some of the techniques. I have some examples here uh, of some sounds that he made. Um, so hopefully this video will be informative and inspiring, and you might learn a couple things. So um, let's get straight into it. I'm just gonna design some sounds. Again, this is a freeform video. I don't plan on editing it much, but you guys are getting a ride along. So let's talk about the init patch. This is where it all starts. This is your blank canvas here with any synthesizer. And so the way I've set mine up is to have control over the oscillator level. Now, oscillator level like in Vital or in Serum, you really want to be conscious of that because if you have your oscillators turn up all the way, you're not going to get the results. It's going to sound like full on all the time. And so I've turned down oscillator one here um, to, you know, a moderate level, right? And full is 128. So it's right now sitting about 90, 90, 92, um, you know, whatever they, it's just a level of the oscillator. I don't know what it is in decibels, but that's there. So oscillator one is on, the other two oscillators are off. Um, and the mixer page uh, in the Hydra, the way the Hydra is laid out is three oscillators, five envelopes, five LFOs, and the mixer page, um, you can control the levels of those oscillators, uh, the level of noise, um, the controlling of the panning of the oscillators, and also how much 
um, ratio wise that each oscillator is going to the individual filters. And you can also decide if your filters, uh, you have filters one and two here, if they're routed in serial or parallel, meaning serial being back to back or parallel being separate. So that's very important. These controls in the mixer are kind of the whole Hydra is basically centered around the mixer, um, which is again, one of the reasons why Hydra is so well thought out um, to even have a mixer control, like the way they structured this whole synth. Uh, is really quite amazing. So anyway, um, here's how I start. So I have oscillator one here, and we just hear it, it's just a basic sawtooth, right? Um, now envelope one and envelope two here are tied to the filter and the amp envelope respectively. You can see there's like little lines here going um, up and down. So if I'm gonna just adjust my, you know, if we're gonna sit here and say, okay, let's make a pad, uh, I'm gonna adjust the attack first and the decay and the release. And the sustain level is gonna be our volume in this case. So the sustain level is where the, the pad will sit um, while we're waiting for the next note input or something. So um, here's how I like to start. Um, again, this can all change uh, depending on where we're gonna go with the patch. Um, you can see this is sort of a um, con uh, vex curve here. So you just wanna like adjust that by adjusting the attack curve to make it concave. Right. Now, one of the things about Hydra is I find when I'm playing, when I'm making pads or whatever, I can run out of voices really quickly. Um, you can see you have a voice control over here and you can select, you know, if it's polyphonic or it's uni unison, but I find that on myself, I wish I had a deluxe. I don't have a deluxe. Maybe someday, you know, when they make a deluxe desktop, I might jump on it. Um, it's a little too rich for my blood at the moment. Plus, I don't really have much room for an extra key bed here. Um, I could certainly make room, but we'll see. One of these days. Anyway, so what you can do here is instead of just using, you know, um, the unison feature or whatever, because that's, that's monophonic, uh, you can just start spreading the oscillators around. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to spread oscillator one. We're going to turn up oscillator two. Okay, we're also gonna select a new uh, wave for um, oscillator one. So I'll just go ahead and select one of these Esquire waves. That's cool. Um, and then we'll take oscillator two and we'll select another one. So now we have two separate oscillators that are um, running two separate waveforms. You can see that oscillators one and two. We'll go into the mixer and now they're both up. So now we have two oscillators. Now what we can do is we can pan one left and one pan one right. So now you can hear immediately, you just, you know, that you heard them all spread out. So now we have a nice wide stereo field uh, for all of our, but you can hear when I, when I run out of voices, it's, you run out of voices quick. So what you can do is use the mute in here and just do some light wave stacking. Wave stacking is Hydrosynth's way of just doing kind of a unison without interfering with the voice count too much. So just a light wave stack here on both of these. Um, you see I can tie Mutant 3, give it a wave stack, um, turn on the depth here. All right, that's nice. That's cool. So as long as we stay minimal. Now, with the filter, um, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna run the filter routing in parallel, okay? And I'm gonna come over here to the mixer and say, all right, let's select oscillator two's filter to go over here. Oscillator one is dedicated to filter one, all right? That sounds nice. And then we will take down the cutoff either by using this or whatever, like we could either use this cutoff knob or this cutoff knob does the same thing, okay? But you can hear that like now we're cutting that off the sound of oscillator one. Okay, we can bring it up a little bit, select filter two, and we can start morphing this filter and maybe bringing this one up. Now this is, you have complete control over this filter. It's sort of like a, it's a variable state filter in the way that you can like change it from high pass to low pass or morph it, make it a notch. It's really cool. Um, so we can make this a high pass, right? Now this could move, right? So we have envelope amount, LFO amount. And let's do that. Let's actually tie a, um, let's tie this um, envelope here because this is tied to the filter. So let's do like a faster attack, a faster decay, turn on the sustain 
and we'll just do a quick little like filter movement here. Um, and we will tie that to filter two and like that. Right, and you can see there's kind of a wash there. So that, that little filter two um, just kind of swooped in. Right, if we switch it to say here, it's gonna it's gonna come in real quickly, and then I'm gonna cut it off over here. Check it out, watch. Whoosh, right, if that was noise or something. Okay, we can do the same thing with um, the noise level. So we come over here, we say noise. We can put set the noise at zero, and then um, what we can do is we have assign envelope one to control the mixer. And we can come down here and say noise volume. So this, check this out. Hear that? All right, and then you got a little noise with it. That's cool. We can also tie a separate envelope to that, but you know, we can just kind of go with that. noise to be free though so what I'm gonna do is is I'm going to um, change this back to a high pass we're gonna take the envelope amount down and we're going to move this over and cut it off here all right that envelope one that's cool and now what we can do is come over here and the noise filter should be all the way on filter two so check this out this is gonna sound better there we go Perfect, exactly. That's great. Now, you, you, when you start running that through effects or something, that's, that's really where it starts getting cool. So I like to save the effects for the last part of my sound designs. So like, you know, the deeper you get, if you can get the results that you're looking for without adding effects, that's even better because the effects are just going to multiply it. They're just going to multiply it, whatever you're doing, and take it to the next level, all right? So we can do a little movement here. We can actually say, all right, let's do a separate um, envelope here. And we can just keep on going. Same process. And um, there we go. Add some decay onto it. Nice. All right. Now with envelope three, you can come over to the mod matrix, say envelope three. Let's move filter one with that. So filter one's cut off. Can we move here? All right. Nice. All right, we can also say um, LFO three here uh, can control maybe the, um, let's see, LFO three can control oscillator one's pitch ever so slightly. Like really slow, <laughs> like this is just a vibrato here. Like this. Okay. And again, I'm probably getting too much volume out of that, um, that oscillator there. So I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. That's good. I notice we don't have much release, so we're gonna do a little more release here on some of these envelopes. There we go. All right, so let's get some gravity in this thing. So we're gonna add oscillator three here and we'll come over to the mixer and we're gonna turn it up ever so slightly. Um, we're gonna come over to oscillator three and maybe make it a triangle. There you go. Nice, excellent, okay. And then, there we go. 
Yeah, we want the less the better. Try taking this down, maybe it. There we go. How's that? Taking it down. Nice. Okay, now let's add some delay. So we're gonna add some delay here. Uh, let's see, pan delay and dry wet. Feedback is up. There we go. Listen to this. Like that. Mm. See that noise hit really just wraps around your head. There we go. Let's add some uh, native reverb over here to our sound. We're gonna turn down the hydra, turn down the volume here, and put it into the synth bus. There we go. How's that? Very nice. Ooh. I'm liking where this is going. Okay, so as you can see, with just a couple simple moves here, and we didn't even do any wave scanning, this was just two um, mutant patches, two wave stack patches. With the sub oscillator, that's like about as basic as it gets. But that works for me. It's a good start. Mmm. It's very distant. Nice. Now you have, we still didn't cover, I mean, there's two other mutants here. We can do some FM if we wanted to. Uh, we could do some of the wave stacking. Um, there's a lot of different stuff we could do here. I just love the sonic fidelity though. The Hydrosynth really is the business when it comes to <laughs> sonic quality. I love it. So let's see if we can pull anything else out of this. So we get the mutant um, two here, which is gonna stack on top of the um, on top of mutant one. But if we can tastefully do this, let's see if this works for us. Gives us a little more life here. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm using oscillator two here uh, as the source of my frequency modulation. So um, we could use oscillator three, or we could just stick to what we got. That's nice though. All right, cool. Uh, let's let's save this. Now the other thing you can do with Hydra is you have complete control over the um, pitch of oscillator one, two, and three using the mod matrix. The mod matrix is extremely powerful. Um, that's one of the things I love about it. So if you wanna to get to back to your init patch real quick, just hold shift and just go right back to the init patch and now we're back at home base. I'm gonna turn off the uh, reverb that I added. And there we go, now we're back at home base here. So one thing we could do is we could start like, you just kind of play with the pitch here and do some sort of like complete control over the pitch. So if I did key tracking here and set it to zero, and then set it to zero, and then set it to zero. Now, now we have just zero going everywhere. But check it out. If we if you use LFO three four five to control the pitch of um, now we could do step right, and then step, and then in step mode we could do semi top lock on. Now check this out. So we have now what we've done is we've said all right, um, we've said 
we're going to now pitch lock the oscillators, okay, using the step thing. And this is like a step sequencer inside of, um, now you can have up to 64 steps on these things, which is kind of cool. Um, so I like that. Now in the mod matrix, what we have to do is say, all right, LFO3 is now controlling oscillator one's pitch and check this out. All right. All right, that sounds kind of like, you know, not, not so great. But um, when we come over here and we say, all right, let's say um, this is on step lock, right? And we're just gonna we're gonna tastefully do this. So let's consider um, just putting it in key, right? And then we're also gonna say um, let's BPM sync this to an eighth note. All right. This still doesn't sound that great, um, but what we can do here is we can say all right, semi lock is on, and we can start just kind of keying in steps that make sense, right? <laughs> Right, you can see how powerful this could be. So like if we lock it all the way to pitch, so now it's complete controlling the pitch. Right? You can change the, the rate of this. Okay. So you can see how powerful this could get really quickly, right? We could we could like line up all three oscillators and have complete control over the different pitches of each single one. So we can say LFO4, all right, let's 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 do this. So we can go LFO4, LFO4, and we can say oscillators two's pitch is completely controlled by that. And then LFO5, oscillator three's pitch is completely controlled by that, all right? Now we can come over here to, uh, to LFOs and just step lock these again. And we'll turn them on. We'll leave these at different levels so we can kind of like um, play with that in a minute. So now we'll come over to here, level five again. BPM sync. We'll make this I don't know our bass note or something. And then we'll come over here and say, all right, we've set it to sign or step and semi lock on. There we go. All right. So now check this out. So now we have complete control. Now watch this. <laughs> Okay, so they're all, all three oscillators, whether they're on or not. Here we go, watch this. Oh, damn. How cool is that, right? So now we've really, we've really created this crazy sort of arpeggiated thing real quickly, um, just by a couple few steps. So um, let's go ahead and just kind of key in um, a little bit of randomness here. So. Oh, I love that. Wow, okay, so by holding shift and hitting on, um, we can change the tempo, the internal tempo, to like something like what we would normally use, um, maybe like 83. How about that? Does that change it? It does. Epic, all right, cool, so now let's go um, and we'll say, all right, filter one, change the cutoff here, key tracking is off, perfect, that's what we want. Um, and then what we'll do is, what we can do is actually take envelope one and give it some, give it some life. And we'll go um, just a quick little like, we'll do this like a pluck, you know what I'm saying? How we usually do plucks uh, in vital or something. So um, there we go, so that'll be our thing. And then, um, Right, and then the um, the reset envelope loop can be um, how could we we could tie this to the oh my gosh can we tie it to <laughs> what I'm wondering is is if we can tie it to that step thing so we could have a step going every single time um, that would be cool no reset's not going to do it for it um, let's see trig sync is on tap trigger. Oh, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. What about this? <laughs> All right, trick saying could be LFO um, three. Oh my God, that's so cool. Trick sync two can be LFO four, and trick sync five can be LFO five. What? Oh my 
my god, that already sounds good. And that's just a bunch of saw waves. So um, let's go to a uh, single and we'll go to the Esquire. And single, we'll go to like a sine wave. And this one will go to say, I don't know, something weird. Um, let's go to, once you get like deep into these waveforms, they get really like harmonic-y. You know what I'm saying? Like you get into these harmonics. Um, I don't know, let's go to that one. That's kind of cool. Ooh, there we go. All right, now let's separate the filters. Come to the mixer here, and the, the hidden page filter out parallel. Okay, and then we'll come over here. Set these two to. Um, All right, and we can also set the mod matrix. We can say, all right, let's assign um, mixer, let's assign mo three, and we'll just go um, noise volume. And there we go. And then we'll go envelope three here, and we'll make this kind of short. We're gonna set the decay of envelope three to one eighth. The BPM sync is now on, check this out. Perfect. Now what I've also done is I've also taken an LFO here and put it on square wave. And that square wave in the mod matrix is controlling the mixer uh, noise level volume. So because it's a square wave, it's modulating ever so slightly uh, up and down, which gives it that nice like velocity feel almost. I love this. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. So we can do some filter movement here. Right? Filter 2's movement can be something. Oh my gosh, there's so much cool stuff we can do here. I love this. All right, now, have we even messed with the panning yet? Um, let's do panning. So we do panning here, and then we could also modulate the panning. That'd be fun, right? Oh my gosh. Wow. This is all sans effects, by the way, so we haven't even touched the effects yet. Um, LFO1 is not um, assigned to anything yet, but what we can do is say LFO1, and we can assign it to the mixer volume, and we will assign it to um, oscillator one's pan. There we go, and we'll do BPM sync on on this one. I like a, you know, maybe like a um, two bars or something. That one step needs a little help. I'm gonna go back here. Is it that one? Yeah, it's that one. It's so interesting. Right? It's a real sustained like sound. So LFO 5 is the one controlling that, I think. I think that's the slow LFO. Yeah, that's the 1-1. One, one. Oh my gosh, this is get, it's just getting better and better. So 16th, quarter, quarter, and maybe make this an eighth. Let's make this an eighth. And the reason why that's doing that is because we haven't locked in anything else. That's more steps. Oh my gosh, so cool. And then we'll uh, come back to the mixer here and we will sign um, that oscillator to there. Nice. All right, now it's showtime. So let's go here and add some feedback. Dry wet. Maybe we'll BPM sync this. Oh, brilliant. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I love the way that sign interplays with it. Oh my gosh. So cool, and I'm just holding that one key the whole time. So as you can see, the, the, the modulation possibilities are really powerful here. So if you consider that 
You can control the pitch with different LFOs because you can step lock these. You can do this in Vital. Um, you can also do it in a Serum. But because you can pitch lock them, um, you have complete control over the steps here. So we can do up to 64 different steps here on this page. Um, we've only got it set to eight, but still, it makes for a really cool sequencing machine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> save. <laughs> I mean, seriously, that, that's really good. Okay, let's find a slot to save it in. I'm stoked on that way that one turned out. Uh, still a little bit more work required, but um, overall, very, very pleased. Um, let's call this Vest 2, and we'll change the color to white because it's in progress, and let's save it. Awesome. All right, so now let's listen to some sound design examples. That's what I, one thing I wanted to do, um, some of Don's stuff. Um, so you guys can hear kind of what my target goal is. I use this as sort of like a baseline, like maybe this is where I want to go with my sound design. So hopefully you guys can hear this. So I think one of the keys here um, and what he's doing is he's using the individual um, envelopes to control the level and the attack really of some of these pads. So I think that's kind of a compelling idea is to use LFOs to control the attack and decay of the actual envelopes that are controlling the volume and therefore giving it some sort of randomness or even like um, some sort of unpredictability and give it some different, really different shapes. If I could uh, put this on screen for you, I would. It's a really cool, organic looking um, pad shape. So I'm going to, uh, let's also listen to one of the other sound design examples. This has been my guidepost. This 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 example has been like my absolute like mantra. I've been living by this um, and trying to strive to this standard of quality um, for a long time now. Listen to this. You can tell that's Hydra. But listen how random it is. Possibly good, right? Like this is really, really good. Um, some of the other key points here later on in this example is in this. Quick again, and then it comes up again.
So both sides working independently, left and right. And I think that's so key. And that's one that's one of the reasons why I've been so inspired by that patch is that he has the independent movement of the left and right channels. And what he's doing is he's giving like free reign over all of, I asked him, I said, how did you make this specifically? And he doesn't remember. He just sort of like banged it out. He says, he said, you know, independent control, key tracking is off on the filters. But you can hear that if you just use an LFO to sort of fade those, um, the left and right channels in and out, like you're gonna get some really good results just by holding down a couple of keys and getting something that's really random and organic and filled with life. So let's go ahead and try to recreate that one if we can. Um, if, we, if we can even get close here. Um, so I'm gonna turn up oscillators one and two. Uh, I'm gonna go here and let's just, um, let's just give us a wave stack. Um, Kind of like what we did the first time, very light. Um, we can control the level of that wave stack or the depth of it with, a, with an LFO. So just think about the possibilities of LFOs. I think that's really important. Like thinking about LFO possibilities here um, in a real world context, right? So um, now let's talk about the envelope. So the envelope two is gonna be our master envelope. Now, if it's just on all the time, right? Um, that's cool, but imagine us having full control over the individual levels without having to deal with LFO two or envelope two. So we can do that in the mod matrix. And we can say envelope three now controls uh, the mixer level of oscillator one, okay? We can also say that envelope four now controls the level of oscillator two or mixer volume of oscillator two, right? So now, now we are not tied to envelope two, um, rather we're tied to this. If you go here and turn down the level of oscillators one and two, here in the mixer now, it doesn't sound like anything, but if we come over here to envelope three and make this have its own thing, and this have its own thing, right? So now we have independent envelopes now are controlling the levels of oscillators one and two. This is very important. So we can go ahead and, I wish there was a copy paste function for the envelopes, that'd be so cool. Um, and then here like this and like that and like this, right? So now we have two separate envelopes, envelopes three and four, they're kind of similar. Well, this one's quicker and I like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it that way. Maybe just a little bit slower. Um, and then uh, now what we have here is when we, when we have, okay. So now one is working now because we've panned these, um, we pan, let's pan them left and right. And now you're gonna be able to hear the one's gonna go off before the other one does. Watch this. That's powerful, okay? Okay, cool. We could we could do that like that. I mean, obviously reset, right? But you can you have control over how the envelope, if the envelope resets, if it doesn't, if it's legato or not, if it's free running, that's cool. This should work. There it is, yep. So reset and envelope loop. So let's do that to the first, the second one. Here we go, envelope four, and we will free run this, reset it, envelope looping it. Now we have two separate independent um, long stage. Now what we can do here, this is where it gets cool, is that we can say, all right, good, we've done that. All right, now it, this one has that. That's kind of a shorter one, that's sort of a longer one. Um, but what we can do is say, okay, well, now that we've set all that up, Let's come over here and we will independently, randomly um, control the, the attack and decay of um, one of the envelopes. So we can say, all right, let's go here. And now LFO3 is going to control envelope 3's attack. Subtly, but it's gonna control it, watch. Okay. So now it's separate. Well, that one is still randomly playing. Okay, we're we're yeah, we're getting closer now. Now we're now we're actually getting the heart of the matter of like how does he control independently? How do you control the independent levels and the independent like randomness of the attack decay sustain for each individual oscillator on one synthesizer playing one set of keys? There you go. All right. So now that we've done that, now we have a nice start to that sound, even though these are still just saw waves, okay? So let's, 
Let's now do like some sort of wave stacking. This will make this horizon. We'll make this one. Um, let's go back to the Esquires and that one and that one. So now we have two separate waves. Um, we'll also have a, um, let's have a uh, triangle or a square wave for gravity here. There we go, square wave for gravity. And we'll go in the mixer and um, we'll just turn up this, this, this will be our base. Can it be like that? Okay. We'll also do uh, another envelope, envelope five. We'll control, um, if you have envelope five, just be like a master thing and you keep the sustain all the way up, it's gonna sustain, like it's not gonna go away. And that's cool, so this the the attack here is the basically the overall attack of the sub oscillator. All right, and then we'll say, all right, um, assign uh, envelope five to oscillator three, or sorry, mixer um, oscillator three's volume. There we go, like this. And we'll turn off oscillator three's volume, like this. I love this. Oh, I love the randomness of that. That's so cool. All right, it's not perfect, but you, you can hear where we're going with this. Um, it's getting good. It's getting real good. All right, let's now, instead of doing that, let's do an LFO. Let's do an LFO. And the LFO can be like, you just, you know, your standard, right? Like one to one um, filter moving here. Okay. Nice long filter. Oh yeah, that would sound so good through delay and reverb. Oh my gosh. All right, so let's also get um, LFO5 in the mix. Uh, here we go, LFO5. We'll do that on the pitch of oscillator one. There we go. And we'll go here and we'll change that to one eighth. Oh, there's so much crazy stuff going on. Morph this filter, move that around. Nice. Doesn't sound like much, but um, watch what happens when um, the Bahalas enter the mix. Nice. In the mixer, we could obviously um, increase the levels just a little bit. So you see, like there's so many ways to design sounds on the hydrosynth. It really is a truly powerful synthesizer when you embrace its methodology. What are the true strengths of Hydra? And then how do I utilize those strengths? Okay. Are we getting um, oscillator three? I'm not feeling it. There. Oh my god. Oh, that's so good. Let's turn these down. Nice. Envelope five is what's controlled that. It's 
to run out of voices here. How many more LFOs we have left? Um, we've assigned LFO three, five. Let's take on LFO four to control um, the wave stacking uh, depth. Um, let's see the depth of wave stack. There we go. All right, LFO four. Up the rate here. Okay, so that's sort of giving it a little bit of randomness there. Um, there we go. LFO two can control um, mutant threes depth. Come over here, LFO two. Can BPM sync this just for SNGs. There we go. Turn it up. Wow. Beauty and simplicity. Astonishingly powerful. And just otherworldly. The Hydra Sense. There's so many things that we could have, I mean, there's like a lot more to it. But I think we'll just kind of end it there. In a deeply complex patch that we really strive to make those necessary adjustments to kind of emulate something else. That's what sound design is all about. I mean, you can take inspirational cues, and work your way towards something really great. Could use some EQ here. Take a little bit of that high end out. Sounding like a pad. Just our filter. Mm. Yes. Thank you guys so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. As you can tell, I love the Hydra synth. And I also love taking deep sound design dives to not only test my own skills, but reimagine what's possible. It never gets old. As always, the best way to support me is to join me on Patreon. We have lots of cool extra tutorials on there, as well as presets for various synthesizers, a lot of extra content. It just really makes so much sense. And if you're already on there already, I just want to express my deep gratitude and thanks for uh, supporting me in my creative journey and bringing me to this point. It's an honor. Thank you guys, and I look forward to the future. So, take good care. If you have any questions, feel free to ask away. The Hydrosynth is, uh, like I said, beautifully simplistic, but astonishingly deep. My name is Chris from Signs of Life, and uh, I will see you all very soon. God, 
God, this is good. We gotta save this. <laughs> As always, keep your heads in the clouds and keep planted firmly on the ground. My name is Chris from Signs of Life, and I'll see you all in the next one.